happy Friday guys it's JJ here what a gorgeous day pretty hot actually I'm um, out at the beach I probably should have put um, sunscreen on but uh, <laughs> I forgot I just went out the door and like shit it's hot and I didn't put sunscreen on so hopefully I'll be okay pretty pretty warm I'm a bit cooler near the beach but uh, yeah pretty warm day so I hope you guys are having a great Friday and getting ready for the weekend. I think it's going to be hot again in Geelong on the weekend. So, uh, yeah, get your sunscreen on. <laughs> but I've got my hat on, so that's a good thing. Um, if anyone's watching, uh, whether you are watching with the recording or whether you're watching live, make sure that you comment and do a little love heart. Uh, I know that uh, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself, but I know if I can reach one person uh, then uh, and, and that they find this valuable, then it's all going to be worth it. So, so I'm going to talk about it's time to purge. What does that mean? It's time to get rid of stuff in your life that no longer serves you. And there's this quote by Marie... Um, uh, condo and she says the best way to find out what we really need is to get rid of what we don't so the best way to find out what we really need is to get rid of what we don't and there's all aspects in our life that we can look at so the first thing I want to talk about is stuff so just stuff physical stuff that you have in your life. As you guys, most of you guys will know, I have moved into my new home just before Christmas, two days before Christmas. And before we moved, actually before we, we moved out of a rental before that and we made sure we went through all our stuff and got rid of what we didn't need, and then just before we moved in, we did the same thing. Now, what I'm finding is in the new house, we've still got some boxes in the, in the garage. And I'm still looking at it and going, do we need all this friggin' stuff? It's just stuff. Like, do we need it all? And it's great to be able to pass that stuff on to someone that does need it. Or get rid of it and throw it in the bin if it's just useless stuff. So the stuff in your life, if you've got lots of clutter in your house, I know for me to be able to think clearly, I need a place, an environment that is clutter free. I need an environment that I feel that's organised and everything's got its place. And so I think there's a fine line between keeping stuff, you know, there's so much stuff that you could say sentimental, but I think sometimes we just hold on to stuff and we just keep it in a box and we don't do anything with it anyway. So the first part of purging is looking at your stuff and that's like everything. So going through your whole house, from your wardrobe to your cutlery in your kitchen to your bathroom to all your uh, crockery, you know, going to your pantry, your books like me, I love books, you know, really looking at stuff and saying, do I really need this? And does it serve who I want to be going forward? Now that's really important because, as you guys know, I've been teaching a lot about the human identity formula, and this is about your identity of who you think you are. And, and so if you've got all this stuff around you and you're trying to hold on to maybe a past identity, just be mindful of that. So being able... I'm just getting up a hill. <laughs> Uh, just be mindful of the stuff around you, that physical stuff that you can look at and say, I'm just going to purge what I need to purge for 2023 that won't serve me 
I'm going to declutter because you declutter your environment and then it helps you declutter your mind. And so that's the first step is looking at what physical stuff you have that you want to get rid of. So even though I've just done that before we moved in, I'm going to do it all again. So one of my nemesis at the moment is my pantry. I can't, I've just had to live there a little bit to see how I want to organise it. But there's stuff there, like, as you guys know, I love to cook, that I just hold on to. And I don't necessarily need it. So I'm going to have to make some hard decisions based on what I want to keep and what I don't need to keep. So number one is stuff. Number two is habits. So what habits do you need to purge? What habits do you need to get rid of? One of the things that I've realized in moving is that we still haven't put our TV up, right? (laughs) We've got TV downstairs, we haven't used it, and we've got one upstairs that we haven't put up yet. And what I've realized even though we're very strict, we've always, well not always, but we've been strict particularly probably the last five years in regards to not watching the news because most of it's negative and propaganda anyway and doesn't serve us. But there's still other stuff that doesn't serve us on TV Uh, and there's stuff that does serve you, right? But what I've realised is because we haven't had this TV up, we've done other stuff. So we've played games, we've played board games, we've done, you know, played card games, whether it be cooking, going in the pool, going for walks, reading on the deck. You know, we're doing other stuff because a TV can just be mindless numb braining entertainment (laughs) and not always of course not always but sometimes it can I remember being in America and I was on I I traveled there on my own and I remember watching this crime show (laughs) and I had to get up really early because I think it was the Tony Robbins event by memory and I was supposed to get I was getting up really early in the morning and I was watching this crime show and it was going every 30 minutes, this was this crime show. And oh, nice motorbike. And then with the crime show, right at the end of the crime show, the new one would come on, right? It was one after the other after the other and they were all different crime stories. And I was just so, <laughs> I, I'd go, oh, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep after this one. And then, then they'd sort of seed or they'd start to, you know, promote the next one. I'm like, oh, hold on a minute. And I'd get hooked again. And I kept getting hooked on the next show. Hello. On the next show. And so I was there for freaking hours. I can't remember how, what time it was. It was like three in the morning or something. And I'm half asleep. I was jet lagged. And I'm still watching this freaking show knowing that I probably had to get up at 6am and I, I had a couple of hours sleep. <laughs> so we can get hooked in on TV and it doesn't necessarily serve you. And there's even times I've watched TV at home and my Ivy the complained or Rocky's complained. We go, oh, this is a terrible show and we're still freaking watching it. <laughs> like, as I said, like just numbly watching it. So (laughs) just be mindful of the habits that we have from TV to, you know, what habits do you have in eating that maybe doesn't serve you? I'm I'm watching at the moment. I I have quite a bit of milk um, and uh, I'm not vegan or anything. um, So, but I I think I have too much milk. And so I don't think that's serving us because I think too much of anything is not good for you. So I'm just watching that. Um, you know, so with your habits of eating or exercising or sleeping or studying, uh, your business habits, your 
your habits with your friends, with your family, you know, what habits have you got that's not serving you? And just do those, as I said the other day, my my Facebook Live, just do the little things. It doesn't have to be the big things. Just look at, say, maybe one habit this week that you think, I just need to purge that. It's not working for me and I've got to get rid of it. One of the things that I purged, uh, I don't think it was last year, I think it was the year before, was that I used to take my phone into my bedroom. Now, my husband still does that. He uses his phone as a an alarm and I keep saying that we should not do that um, but he keeps doing it and sometimes it will ding he'll get um, messages from work um, and they're automatic stuff and it'll ding and it'll wake me up um, but I used to take my phone to bed and so what I used to do is I'd be reading I'd go yep my, my habit was go to bed get a book read sounds all good right until I'd start reading and then it would prompt an idea and then I'd get my phone and then I'd think, oh, I'll look that, maybe it's a quote, for instance, and I'd go, oh, I'll look that person up, I don't know who that person is. And then I'd go down the rabbit hole <laughs> of the internet. I'd be looking at who that person was and then suddenly, oh, they're married to someone. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, what happened to them? And then I'd be down, down this rabbit hole and... The next minute I'm too tired and I haven't even really read much of my book because I've gone down this rabbit hole uh, on the internet because it was I had access to it. So that's one habit that I purge. So think about what habit you can purge uh, that's not serving you. The next one is, which, which I've just uh, talked about actually, is technology. You know, what habit in technology do you want to purge? Uh, so is it that you're, so one of the things that uh, I purged, again, was with, with my phone, is unless I've got uh, a big event or something like that, I will not wake up and get my phone first thing. Don't do it anymore. Um, so those of you, and I know some of my clients sometimes will message me and then I'll, I'll message them back a little bit later. I don't get up first thing and check my phone. Because again, for me, it takes me down a rabbit hole. And so first thing, I don't do that. First thing I have, um, and I've started to do this again, which, which I lost um, this, habit, this good habit uh, for a little while once we moved in. And thanks, Sam, for those lemons that you gave me um, because you've prompted me to have my lemon water again in the morning. Um, so, you know, so first thing I have my lemon water and I look at my to-do list. I usually do that probably the night before, but I adjust it in the morning to see how I've gone the day before and if I need to add or subtract anything. Uh, then I'll have, uh, usually have a coffee uh, and, I, and then I usually sit on the deck if it's a nice day or sit in the lounge chair and read. So that's my first thing that I do in the morning um, and then depending on my day I might then check my phone map out what I'm going to do um, if it's social media wise and then I'm usually off on my walk unless I've got clients so making sure that our technology works for us how often are we checking our emails for instance have we got a habit of checking it and checking it and checking it again? Do we have an alert that goes ding every time our emails happen or our Facebook thing happens or whatever that keeps drawing us back to technology? Uh, or do we have a habit that we go, no, I only check my emails twice a day. I check at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and that's it. Uh, so just re really looking at that, what, what, what emails are you signed up to right now? That's part of my purge. My goodness, I get so freaking excited and I get onto all these freaking <laughs> sites and suddenly I'm getting all these emails from all these freaking people and I don't need them all. And then I take so long to delete all these bloody emails and sometimes, you know, hopefully I don't get the ones that I really should be looking at lost. Um, because I've got that many bloody emails from people that I, 
Um, so making sure that your technology, what do you need to purge in technology? Uh, do you need to purge the alert system and stop, stop the alerts? Do you need to purge not being on Facebook as many times? or Instagram, or LinkedIn, whatever it is for you, or TikTok, or I don't know, do you need to be on all those platforms? I know I went on TikTok a bit, I had no idea what I was doing, so I'm off it now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but really looking at what, and again, this is all based on, is it serving you towards what you want to achieve this year? So purging number three is technology. Number four is a tough one people now gee I, I gee I've changed in regards to this because years ago I would hold on to people with my dear life and I have to say as a new coach I probably said the same thing to my clients in regards to holding on to people in their life and not everyone serves you, right? And so in the last few years, I've purged a few people from my life that haven't served me and that maybe crossed boundaries or uh, conflicted with my values. And I think that's a good thing to do that, guys. Uh, and it can be tough. It can be challenging, um, particularly someone like me who, you know, I mean, I've got a bit windy here, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, you know, I've got friends, you know, one of my girlfriends, my best friends, Miller, who we've been friends since we were in, like, primary school. You know, I'm such a loyal person. Uh, but sometimes there's people in your life that just do not align with who you want to be or they cross your line of values or boundaries. Um and unfortunately, in business, that happens. You know, I saw, I saw someone's uh, post just the other day in regards to that. Actually, two posts. One post was with the staff member apparently crossing the line um, and doing some stuff that wasn't, was a bit dodgy. And the other person was consulting with somebody and uh, the consultant actually did the wrong thing by them, which is horrible. And unfortunately, that happens, guys, in business. You know, I've, I've absolutely learnt the hard way um, because my philosophy is, right or wrong, for me is trust. Uh, trust until something happens and that, that, that trust is broken. I don't, I don't look at someone and say, earn my trust. I, that's not about me. Um, but I'm pretty intuitive and, and I've been burnt a few times in business where it might, I haven't picked it up. And unfortunately, sometimes it's people that are very, very close to you uh, and money is a big driver for some people, unfortunately. And I mean, I've had people take my clients, I've had people uh, take my work uh, and it's been devastating. It, it really has, um, and and when I say devastating, like devastating, I I was in tears when that happened because you know I trusted this person so, um, and it happens. You know, it happened um, many years ago when I was working for a retail outlet. I was looking after twenty five retail stores, and <laughs> there was a staff member who I just absolutely I I. So supported her, and I and she was a a mum. She you know she was great at what she did uh, in sales, and I really wanted to support her and get her into management. And so I supported her with everything, um, and I cheer squatted her you know with uh, upper management to get her into more of a leadership role. Uh, and I backed her, and I remember. I remember this day when the security manager messaged me and said, I'm just going to shake a little bit, and messaged me and said, because uh, there was a, a problem with uh, money going missing, 
And so I'd highlighted that and I got the security manager, the national security manager to look into it. And I remember the phone call. I remember being in the car so vividly and him saying to me, this person is a sub- suspect. And, I'm, and I was like, no, she's not. And <laughs> they were like, no, she's, we've got good, clear evidence. Like we've got cl- clear evidence in regards to this person. And I defended her. Like I'm thinking he has got no idea. He doesn't know her. I know her and she wouldn't do that right and then I I backed her so much that the security manager actually said normally the you know the area manager would go into the meeting with with you know the the interview meeting with the person that was the suspect and he said look I think it's best that you don't Uh, and I was and I was really disappointed and then they had this meeting and he comes out and he says, she's admitted it. I was devastated, guys. I, I can't tell you how devastated I was. I'm, it still hurts me today. And I'm talking, this was when I was, gee, that was, would have been 30 years ago. It still hurts that she did that because I felt... And, and, and right or wrong, this is how I felt. I felt she did it to me. And one of the things, you know, trust and dishonesty and, you know, that sort of stuff. Oh, my goodness. That was, yeah. And uh, I just remember her writing a letter and she wrote this letter to me. And the national sales uh, security manager said to me, look, she's written you a letter of apology. And I didn't even read it because I couldn't read it. <laughs> so I didn't read it. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just and, – and I said that's, that happened at the start of my – you know, when I was really starting to lead people or big groups of people, you know, 25 retail stores. Um, and I thought that I was someone that could read someone really well. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's people that do the wrong thing by you. And um, unfortunately, uh, you know, even though I said years ago, I try and hold on for dear life. Now I go, you know what, if they're not serving where I want to go, if they've crossed my boundaries, um, then I send them away uh, and hope that they will change <laughs> Um, but that's all up to them. So, um, so purging people from your life is really important, right? Um, even though it can be really, really challenging. And it doesn't mean getting rid of them completely. You know, sometimes there's people in your life that you think, I'm just going to keep a distance because I don't think their, their influence on me isn't very positive in whatever way. Then you just keep a distance um, that um, is good for you guys. So the last thing that I want to talk, last but not least, is your mind, purging stuff from your mind. Oh my goodness. I I talked about the records that we play in our mind with my last podcast, you know, it's what do you need to purge? What do you need to get rid of? What's those sayings that you say to yourself every single day or every single week that's just not serving you? Purge them, get rid of them. put in you know some really empowering thoughts instead of those negative thoughts that aren't serving you you know what do you want to have to purge from your mind what sort of thinking um, isn't serving you anymore and and that's a challenge to do guys if you haven't got a coach or mentor often you are blinded by some of those things Uh, and so it's really important to have someone that's going to challenge your thinking so that you can see those blind spots. Um, Some of the stuff you will know. Um, So making sure that, you know, things like journaling is really important to start purging stuff. So if things, if, if you've got a challenge or you're really upset over something, maybe just write it all down and get it out on paper. Um, you might have a confidant that you can speak to, you know, a really good friend that you can speak to in confidence. I think that's really important. Um, 
and and it's challenging right the depending on your role and the leaders that you know that I know listen to some of my stuff sometimes uh, it's even harder for you guys as senior coaches to have someone that you are confident um, you can speak to with with confidentiality about some of the challenges that you have so it's really important to purge your mind um, and get rid of all the stuff that's not serving you so in purging in summary the things that we're going to purge is stuff so physical stuff in our life that we're purging habits that aren't serving us anymore technology um, that's not working for us people and purging stuff in your mind that's not serving you either. Uh, So I just want to finish on a quote. So if anyone's got any insights, please make sure that you pop them in the chat box. I'd love to hear your insights and if you found this of value. And also make sure that send it to, you know, share it to someone else if you feel that they need to purge someone from their life, they need to purge stuff in their life, technology, whatever it is, uh, make sure that you share it. Um, with anyone that you think uh, this would be of value. So I want to finish with this quote, which I found, uh, which is really uh, sums everything up, I think, that we talked about. So this is from Peter Walsh. Clutter is not just the stuff on your floor. It's anything that stands between you and the life you want to be living. So I'll say that again. Clutter is not just the stuff on your floor. It's anything that stands between you and the life you want to be living. Thank you, guys. I trust that's been helpful for you. Any comments, I'd love to see them. And I trust that uh, even if there's some one thing that you purge that's going to help you towards your goal, um, that would mean that my mission has been completed. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Have an awesome weekend.